am so excited for today's DIY. This is the first time that I'm gonna be reupholstering something. This bench is like my starter project on reupholstering because actually if you see this beautiful chase right here that I'm sitting on. I also got this at the thrift store for $30. So when I saw it, I was like, oh my God, $30, that's so cheap. But the only thing wrong with it is this fabric, obviously, like it's just old. I wanted to change this fabric out for something else, but my skill level is just, it's just, it's just not there yet. So I just don't want to mess around with it yet until I'm like more confident in my skills with reupholstering. So I thought that starting off with this bench, oh, it's so dirty. <sighs> so I thought that, ugh, I thought that starting off with this bench was like a good first project because it's really simple. It's just a rectangle. Like there's not much I have to do as opposed to this chase right here. So excited for this. All right, let me put my hair up because I hate my hair is on my face. This bench is really gross. <laughs> um, actually, so this was something that Lewis and I found at a thrift store a while ago for $7. So when I saw it, I was so excited. I was like, Lewis, we have to get this. Like I know it has so much potential. And he was just like, no, like this, this is gross. Like why? And literally, this is what I had to do. I had to pick it up and show him the bottom. And if you guys can see, that wood is in like perfect condition. Like there's nothing wrong with this wood at all. It's not rotted, like it's not gross. Like it's literally a great piece of wood. So what I'm gonna do today is I am just going to take off this nasty ass piece of fabric and replace it with something pretty. So just in case any of you guys were curious, let me like zoom you guys in so you could see how nasty this fabric is. Oh. You can see how there's like a million stains. Like I can't even identify what they are. I mean, it kind of looks like makeup stains a little bit. Like these little dots kind of look like eyeshadow stains. So at one point in time, it might've been somebody's vanity bench, who knows? But I don't know about these little yellow spots. So the very first thing I'm gonna have to do is take these handles off. So I hope that's easy. Actually, I'm really sad because this one is missing a screw so yeah I'm really OCD like that it's gonna like bother me that like there's one screw missing you know if it isn't predictable enough of course I am going to paint these gold because there's absolutely nothing silver in this house okay we don't do silver. Everything gold. All right, so now it's time to work on this nasty ass fabric. So I don't have any actual staple removers, so I am just gonna use these pliers and hope that it works. I can already tell that this is about to be the most tedious process of this bench, removing these fucking staples. But you know what, let me try this. No, that doesn't do anything. It is really deep in there. All right. This is literally why I do these tutorials. So you guys can watch my struggles and what I go through and know what not to do when it's your turn to do it too. Okay, so I finally have a little rhythm going on now. It's getting a little bit easier, but I did not expect this process to be so freaking tedious. I mean, I don't know why I thought that, just because there's so many staples. 
but yeah like i said now that i have a rhythm it's a lot easier okay guys i cannot believe it took me a whole hour to remove these staples my triceps are on fire right now but here's the review i said review i meant reveal <laughs> Okay, so it turns out that either this was originally another bench, but there's another fabric under it. And look how pretty that is, guys. Not something that I would want in my home, but that's pretty. All right, so these are my fabric options. I am heavily leaning towards this one. This is just like a regular velvet and it's just like a, a pretty color of pink and it's just really nice. This is also a pink velvet, but it's crushed velvet. So I'm not sure how this would look on a bench just because this just looks better on clothing in my opinion than it does on furniture so that's the only reason why i'm like saying no to this and this is also really really pretty but it also has this like paisley print that like we're trying to avoid i mean the only difference between this fabric and the one that's on it right now is that this is pink instead of blue what's the point of me changing it just for it to look exactly alike but just be in a different color i'm also oddly really into this glitter blue fabric that's just so pretty but i don't think i want to do blue just because um all the accessories on my vanity is pink so i want to stick within this little area right here but i'm leaning towards that one all right so i am painting the legs gold right now of course All right, perfect. I had just enough paint to cover this and I hope that I'm not missing any spots because if I am, I'm gonna have to go to the store and get some new paint. So spray paint kind of does this thing sometimes when you're painting on metal, like it doesn't show that you missed a spot until you look at it later in the light. So. So I borrowed this staple gun from my uncle a long time ago i think it was actually a year ago yeah it was because i borrowed it the same time that i got the bench because i knew that i needed a staple gun for the bench um anyways yeah so i've never used a staple gun before it seems pretty straightforward this is a two-in-one gun so it is both a staple and a nail gun so i guess i kind of have to read the instructions to see which is which so i just realized that i don't have the correct staples so i ordered these staples mad long ago and they are not correct because i saw this little thing down here that says universal oh that's not focusing but anyway so i saw this little thing down here that says universal fit so i just assumed that that meant universal fit but i didn't read down here that it has like model names so since my staple model is not the correct one i just tried to like jam these staples in there and they're not like the right size so now these staples are just stuck in there and i tried to shoot the gun and none of the staples were coming out so i literally have to use my pliers to get these out and now i have to go to home depot and get another one All right, guys, I am back. So I actually grabbed both of the packs for future reference just in case I need to do another upholstery project with this staple gun. So when I was reading the directions, it actually gives you like a little chart right here for the different staple sizes you need for each project. So the one that I got originally from Amazon that was not the correct size is three by eight and it is 10 millimeters. So three by eight is the length of the staple and 10 millimeters is the width. So the new one I got is 5 sixteenths, and it is 8 millimeters. So that explains why this was having a difficult time being put into the chamber, and hopefully this goes more smoothly. And general rule of thumb that I do know, and I have no idea why I completely ignored this, but if something is hard to put in, 
if you have to force it in that probably means that it doesn't fit so don't force it in so i don't know why i did that it was not going in and i literally this is what i did i took these scissors right here and i was like jamming it into the chamber and like that should have been my sign to be like this is just not the correct fit like anything that is supposed to fit will fit obviously so that's where i went wrong and i'm just really happy that i was able to remove those staples using my pliers or else I would have just had to buy a new staple gun so let's try this out so now i am gonna finally put it into my staple gun and hope that it fits so i'm why don't you fit please i don't have time for this okay <laughs> all right so let me just close it up and give it a little test it right into the back to see if it works okay that worked beautiful okay okay so now that i know that the staple gun is finally working i'm going to kind of clear up my space a little bit and cut out my fabric so that we can finally get started so the very first thing i'm going to do is find a section of this fabric that is pretty so i can't remember where i bought this it was a very long time ago um so I'm pretty sure that I got it at G Street Fabrics in Rockville. And if you guys have ever been to G Street, you know that they have a section off the side of the store where they sell, um, well, I don't know how they decide those pieces of fabric, but they just have this section that is $3.97 per yard, which is amazing. And they have a lot of very nice fabrics that go into these piles. So I'm not sure what makes them decide. Maybe it's just like scraps or whatever, but I'm not sure if that's the case because I have been able to buy like 10 yards or something before. So I really don't know what makes them decide to put those fabrics into that pile. But anyway, so as you can see, this um fabric has well maybe that's what it is maybe like it has like a damage or like there's just something wrong with it for them to deem that it needs to go into the 397 pile so um there's like little stains on it and stuff like that and like it's just also a little weather this isn't something that i had noticed when i was in the store but let's be honest for 397 a yard i still would have bought this beautiful velvet for that price anyway so if you guys can see it just has a lot of issues with it it has these little markings on it and i can't tell if it's just from being folded for too long or if it was like faded from the sun you know so i'm just gonna try to find a part of this fabric that that isn't oh so noticeable because i feel like that takes away from the bench looking luxe if there's like a visible marking on it you know what i mean um i just don't want it to look distressed so this is actually really hard because this whole entire piece of fabric is like this but let's see maybe if i like iron it out it'll fix it i don't know but it's looking like it's looking like this corner is the best right here okay so what i'm gonna do is i am going to put it upside down like this let me lay it as flat as i can see this is why i'm saying i need a table guys <laughs> i mean it's not like i do diys all that often so i get why i don't necessarily need one but when i do it will make my life so much easier if i didn't have to be like crawling on the floor to do this okay so let me smooth this out as flat as possible pull it back some to make sure i'm in the frame okay so this little area rose up a little bit and that's fine because we're just gonna staple it down anyway all right so now i am ready to put my bench over it so now i'm just gonna kind of fit it to see how much i need like this is too much right here i am like a stifler for conserving and saving fabric and that would be such a waste to me and okay so you guys can't see this but over here this folds over perfectly like i would only have to staple it down a teeny bit and also what i don't want to do is i don't want the fabric to be loose if that makes any sense so it's like i'm just gonna leave a little tiny bit of spare fabric so that i can kind of pull it tighter and make the fabric nice and taut so it doesn't look so it doesn't look loose so let me do it to this side and kind of 
measure it and pull it down a little because this doesn't need all of that fabric. Okay, we're almost there. Just a little bit more. Okay, I think that's nice. Just a teeny bit more. Okay, so I think that's good. And like I said, I could just kind of pull it a little bit to make it nice and taut. And let me just make sure that this is straight all the way. Okay. So let me okay. pull it right about here. Okay, now literally all I have to do is just cut this fabric straight. Cutting fabric is really straightforward. I don't think you guys need to see that or anything. Okay, that's good. So I'm just gonna keep pulling it as I cut to make sure that it's long enough. Cause the last thing I want is to accidentally like cut too short. And now the fabric's too short, obviously. So let me cut straight across, and then I'm gonna measure the back, and it's gonna be the exact same as before. Okay, so just to show you guys what I have so far, it's literally just a little rectangle that is the exact size that I need for this bench. So after this, I can go ahead and finally start stapling. First is I am going to staple down four center points right here. And all that really does is just ensure that my fabric doesn't shift underneath, you know what I mean? So I'm just gonna start right here. Make sure that's pulled tightly. Let me trim some of this off right here. So I am just holding it down and flipping it over like that. So that seems like a perfect little fold right there. Okay guys, we are officially done. Let me just tighten this up. I'm just gonna trim off any of the excess because one thing that makes bunches ugly is when you flip it upside down and you can see all this extra fabric like hanging off the bottom. So just going through and doing that right now. Okay, so let me just Check out my handiwork. Oh my God, this is beautiful, guys. Wow, my very first upholstery project and it looks beautiful. Loving it. Last but not least, I am just poking holes into where the original screws are. So I'm just doing that as like my little mark so that when I go through with my scissors, I know where they go. That's pretty straightforward. I don't think I need to show you guys, but yeah, so just kind of use that to figure out where your hole was, make a little hole, and that's it. Just poke your nail through, and that's... I'm actually really proud of myself, guys. I mean, I always am with every project that I do, but I feel like each one gets a little bit more complex, you know? Up. 
So I am finally finished with this bench. I am so excited. Like I said, this is probably my favorite DIY yet. And I say that about every single DIY I do, but I feel like with each one that I do, it gets a little bit more intense, you know? I mean, all my other ones were cool, but I feel like with each one, I'm reaching a different level. Like my first one was like, I'm just gonna paint. And my second one was like, okay, I'm just drilling some holes in on a shelf. But now it's like, I just reupholstered something for the first time. And that's like next level DIY. So this was just like really, really exciting. And I just i'm just like so excited to share this with you guys and i'm so excited to see how it looks with my vanity which i also diy'd if you haven't seen that video yet i will link you guys somewhere and all i have to do now is clean my room because i can't show you guys a video until i do that so let's get to it all right so this was my little work area yeah it looks so beautiful already i'm so excited guys So I just wanted to put it somewhere that was less clustered so you guys could see the bench a little bit better. You can still see all the flaws that the fabric has, but that's okay. I think it's still pretty nice. So loving the Art Deco vibe. And I think that this is a piece that I definitely will keep with me even if I move. It's just so me, so perfect. And I don't think it looks like a $6 bench.